you may have missed Ender Lilies, Quietest of the Nights, a dark fantasy action RPG released digitally in the middle of 2021 for PC on Steam, the Nintendo Switch, modern Xbox platforms, and the PlayStation 4. This title is a result of the efforts of Japanese developers Adglobe and Livewire, and published by the relatively newly formed Binary Haze Interactive, which according to its homepage, was founded as a game publisher dedicated to introducing a global audience to original Japanese games with unique aesthetics and deep lore. And with Ender Lilies, I'd say they accomplished that, since it's a beautifully haunting game that has received high critical praise not just from media publications, but also from those who have played it. The game's success on digital platforms led to it getting physical releases in Japan for the Switch and PlayStation 4 on March 24th, 2022. Standard versions were offered at a budget price of 3,828 yen, which is slightly higher than its roughly 25 US dollar digital price tag and limited collector's editions offered for 10,648 yen, which housed the game in a special box package that also included an art book and soundtrack CD. Limited Run would also offer North American physical editions later that year in both standard and collector's editions, though the latter ditched the art book in favor of a reversible poster and enamel pin. And adding to the list of options, a European physical edition is going to be released in early 2024, courtesy of Clear River Games. No physical love for Xbox, sadly. On the Japanese version's physical launch day, I was killing time in an electronics store waiting for a train when I just happened to see the Switch edition of the game on display, and its fantastic cover art instantly caught my eye. Ender Lilies was a game I had never heard of before then, and I hadn't planned on buying anything in particular that day, much less a game before a big trip out of town. However, the artwork as well as the images and words on the back of the box compelled me to pick it up right then and there. It turned out to be a great decision, and little did I know that I was about to have one of my best gaming experiences of at least the past five years. Although Ender Lilies has been out for a while now, there are two main reasons why I wanted to review it. First is that I think it's an absolute gem of a game, and second is I want to do whatever I can to spread the word. I've been a huge fan of the so-called Metroidvania style of game ever since the days when the term was originally coined, and there have been some real quality entries in the genre in recent years on modern platforms that I've enjoyed, such as Record of Lotus War, Deedlet in Wonder Labyrinth, Hollow Knight, and Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. All great games, but Ender Lily's Quietest of the Nights is my absolute favorite of the new wave of Metroidvanias I've played. In February of 2023, Binary Haze announced that it has sold a whopping 1 million units of Ender Lilies, which means a lot of people have gotten to experience it. However, I think there are even more people out there who would enjoy this title who haven't played or heard of it yet. So if you're one of them, I hope this video helps you to find a new game that might end up becoming one of your favorites too. This review will cover the story setup and basic gameplay, go over some of the finer points of game progression, talk about visual and sound design, and of course give my final verdict and thoughts. I'll keep story spoilers to a minimum, but here's a different kind of spoiler. This is going to be a mostly positive review as I'm sure you've already guessed, though I will bring up what I feel are negative aspects of the game as well. And finally, I own and have completed this game for both the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4, and while a majority of the footage used will come from the latter, I'll go over a few of the differences between the versions. Another spoiler though, there's really nothing major that differentiates the various ports. Anyway, let's dive into the abyss. The game begins with a brief cutscene of a disembodied red spirit discovering a slumbering young girl wearing an ornate turquoise amulet, awakening her from a deep sleep. When this pale child comes to, she finds herself housed in the walls of a dirty, ramshackle room, and the spirit reveals himself as the Umbral Knight, an enigmatic spectral swordsman. He inquires if she has knowledge of the events that took place before and as she slept, but finds the girl in white has no memories of her life before waking, seemingly the victim of amnesia. Though she cannot speak, she does understand the warrior's words, and can communicate through gestures. Rather than tell her about the state of the world outside the sanctuary, he suggests she take a look for herself, and from here the player takes control of this unnamed innocent looking girl, the protagonist of Ender Lilies. As you would imagine, being so small and inexperienced means her actions are quite limited, especially at this early stage of the game. The D-pad or analog stick is used for movement, pressing down will crouch, and the right analog stick pans the camera slightly ahead in whatever direction is pressed. Pressing the bottom face button performs a jump, and the player will automatically grab onto and climb up ledges. The two appear to be deep inside of a church, and won't be able to leave by simply walking through a door, as a number of grotesque creatures have taken refuge in the decrepit sanctuary, and they mean to do harm to the vulnerable child. On her own, she cannot do anything to fight off these fiends, but thankfully she has the Umbral Knight there to protect her. Pressing the left side face button, the girl will summon the phantom swordsman to her side, where he draws his blade for a quick strike that can be chained into combos. 
While the heroine is unable to directly engage in battle, she is not completely defenseless as she can lunge out of harm's way with a tap of the right trigger, letting her dodge enemy attacks or get behind those holding shields, a maneuver that plays a large part of this game's combat system, making it feel a bit like a two-dimensional Dark Souls at times. Also like Dark Souls, enemies can be knocked down when a poise meter is drained after taking enough hits. I won't be that cliche and say this game is the Dark Souls of Metroidvanias, but there are a few other similarities to the Souls games which will come up a couple of times, so be warned. Much of the story and lore of Ender Lilies is slowly revealed through journals and other scribblings picked up throughout the game, and writings discovered in this initial area inform the player that these hostile beings are known as the Blighted, ordinary people who have been driven to madness and transformed into undying abominations that hardly resemble their former selves, a fate worse than death that afflicts them with ceaseless pain and uncontrollable rage. Besting these monsters in combat inherits their blight, which serves as experience points in Ender Lilies, and accumulating enough blight raises the player's level up to a maximum of 100. Leveling up doesn't increase HP, nor does it lead to any new skills being learned. It's strictly to raise a base attack stat. In order to extend the life bar, players must discover amulet fragments which add 5 or 20 points to their max HP. As the mysterious young girl and her even more mysterious ghostly companions slowly make their escape through the dilapidated corridors of the decaying building, they come across a welcoming bench which gives them a moment of relief from the horrors that surround them. This bench is one of many resting spots in Ender Lilies, called Respites, which act as checkpoints and restore all hit points. This isn't the only way to replenish HP though, since the heroine can pray using the amulet she wears, healing her up to three times at the outset of the game. Respites also refill her prayer stock, though finding a rare white flower resembling a water lily in some areas will add one to the stock as well. If HP reaches zero, the young girl will return to the last place she rested at. With no penalties other than the inconvenience of having to trudge back to where she fell and being forced to take on any enemies previously slain all over again, because resting at these checkpoints will revive any downed foes. The respite checkpoint system in Ender Lilies is a lot like the bonfire mechanic in the Souls series, minus the no real penalty for death part, so there's one more similarity between the games. Game progress can be saved at respites, in addition to a host of other things, but we'll go over them a little later. The two eventually arrive at the church's altar, where they also come into contact with a figure who is different from the Blighted encountered so far. She is the Guardian Secret, who still retains a shred of her humanity as she mumbles about her duty to protect someone. However, the Blight consumes her and she charges at the girl in a violent rage. Halfway through the struggle, Sigrid mutates into a truly horrific monstrosity, amplifying her anger and aggression immensely. It's a difficult affair, but thanks to her undead protector's sword skills, as well as performing a whole lot of baseball slides, the young girl survives the brutal battle. In her defeat, a regretful Sigrid admits she was meant to protect the young girl, and the heroine reaches out to place her hand on the fallen guardian. Suddenly she's able to view one of Sigrid's memories, where she speaks of the resilient priestess of the fount, an ailing woman with the ability to purify the blighted and of deathly rains that have come to the land, afflicting those baptized in its unholy showers with the blight. Finally, we understand it was Sigrid who hid the young girl away from the monsters who have overrun the church, whom she calls Lily. The escape from the church served as Ender Lily's tutorial stage, and from here on the real journey begins for Lily. It turns out that she is a priestess of the White Parish, much like the aforementioned Priestess of the Fount, and is unaffected by the rains. And like the Priestess of the Fount, Lily also has the rare ability to purify the Blighted, as she did when she touched Sigrid. 
But purification didn't just bring peace to the afflicted guardian, it also freed her spirit to join Lily and protect her along with the Umbral Knight. Sigrid can now be summoned to swing her ball and chain on land in midair, and her wings give the girl a small boost that lets her perform the Guardian's Leap, which is a fancy way of saying double jump. That will make it easier to explore the rest of the game world, a kingdom known as Land's End, made up of nine large areas that feature locales such as fallen townships, twisted luminescent forests, crumbling castle towers, and creepy underground dens hiding ghastly sights and secrets. Ender Lilies places a heavy focus on exploration and action in its gameplay, sprinkling in some light puzzle-solving elements here and there, like any good Metroidvania title should. Like the church, each area is inhabited by a boss character whose memories are crucial to piecing together the events that led to the fall of the kingdom and the whereabouts of the Priestess of the Fount, as well as discovering who Lily truly is. And as was the case with Sigrid, these purified bosses bring with them new attack skills and abilities that make combat and navigating the world easier. Some of these abilities include an air dash that replaces the clumsy fumbling dodge, the capability to swim underwater in perpetuity, and moves to break through barriers made up of pulsating blighted mass. And since Ender Lilies is a Metroidvania-style game, each of these new abilities open up new paths in previously explored parts of the game map. Aside from the main bosses, there are several sub-bosses in each large area that are based on one of the standard enemy types found there. The first of these is encountered shortly after leaving the church, the Cliffside Hamlet Youth, who was once a young boy separated from his mother during the chaos of the Reign of Death. Purifying these troubled souls also recruits them, and any new skill can be assigned to one of three buttons at respites. Players can equip two sets of skills that can be swapped out in real time using the right shoulder button. Skills are divided into main skills and sub-skills. The former typically have unlimited uses and act as the main methods of taking down enemies. The Umbral Knight's sword slashing attack is an example of a main skill, and most of the skills gained from area bosses are similarly main skills. Subskills are extremely varied and can do anything from shooting out magic projectiles, filling an area with damaging gas for a set period of time, or summoning a familiar type creature to automatically attack nearby foes. Sigrid's ball and chain strike and the grenade-like arcing jump attack of the Cliffside Hamlet Youth are two specific examples of subskills. The main downside of subskills is that they have limited uses and must be recharged at respites or by finding blighted flowers. There are some main skills and subskills that can be used underwater, and each skill can be enhanced using certain kinds of blights found throughout Land's End. These blights are sometimes found in breakable crates and barrels in small amounts, and at times along with a tiny amount of HP restoration, but a majority are gained from purifying blighted who are off the beaten path and on the verge of completely losing their humanity. There are two types of blights used to upgrade skills, stagnant blights for subskills and the rarer furious blights for main skills. Upgrades will typically raise attack power, increase combo chains and projectile counts, or lower the cooldown time required in between attacks. Only one skill doesn't adhere to this system, which is Lily's first, the Umbral Knight. His attacks can only be enhanced by finding ancient souls, which are found on the corpses of the brave warriors of his extinct clan. Another thing players can do at respites is equip any relics they find around Land's End. These relics are extremely useful, granting effects such as increasing attack power or decreasing damage from enemies, boosting spirit uses, or improving movement speed or jumping height. Each of these relics take up a certain number of equipment slots to utilize, typically one or two, though there are a few that require no slots at all, such as a ring that grants the parry ability by using the R shoulder button while not in motion. Lily starts off with only two of these slots, but finding elusive chains of sorcery will increase them up to a total of 20. Equipping relics is also the only way to increase the number of usable prayers, though to increase the potency of each prayer, you'll have to obtain a certain precious item that I won't show for potential spoiler reasons, as its discovery is one of the game's more surprising revelations. All of the story-related findings in the form of journals and notes can be reread at any time from the status menu, and all boss memory cutscenes can be viewed at respites. Discovering all items and skills in Ender Lilies is actually a lot easier than most other Metroidvanias, and that's for two reasons. One is that normal enemies don't drop anything other than experience, so there are no rare drops to grind for. And two, any area where something important still remains undiscovered is colored blue on the map, and once everything is acquired, they become yellow. That being said, there are at least a couple of rooms that are sure to stump most players regarding item discovery. The minimap can be displayed a couple of different ways and in real time, and while it's not super accurate, it also labels where all exits are in the area, making it extremely helpful in determining where and how to progress through the game. There's also a fast travel feature that makes navigating the depraved landscape of Land's End a breeze. Ender Lilies tells a mature tale that's full of interesting twists that touches upon the themes of loyalty and sacrifice, greed and hatred, the dangers of delving into the forbidden, and of course, the nature of life and death.
As you probably noticed from the gameplay shown so far, Lily's appearance varies at different points of the game, becoming darker and more corrupted as she purifies the tragic victims of the Blight, saving them but in turn taking on a part of their suffering. This is a process that starts from her very first purification with Sigrid, a subtle but noticeable change that perhaps foreshadows the protagonist's fate. And I do mean perhaps, as there are multiple endings to Ender Lilies that lead to wildly different conclusions. Whatever path the player takes, however, results in a beautifully presented narrative that is sure to leave an impression, an impression that is greatly aided by the game's fantastic art direction. Perhaps even more than its excellent gameplay and story presentation, the visual and musical art direction of Ender Lilies sets a high standard not only for action or metroidvania titles, but for video games in general. I know that's a pretty subjective take, but this is my review after all. Visually, the game looks like a moving painting and at times can resemble a vanillaware title, which is high praise in my book. The dreary world is reminiscent of a less cartoony Hollow Knight, a game that Ender Lilies is often compared to, or even Dark Souls. I swear that's the last time I bring that game up. The animations are nice and fluid, and the many background objects give each area a nice sense of depth, making the world of Land's End feel real. Little touches like being able to peer into the snowy landscape through the cracked walls of a stone stronghold just really create an awesome atmosphere. Environments feel alive, despite the death that hangs in the air and litters the earth, and the white and pure lily stands out as a shining ray of light in a desolate world devoid of hope, which she is. I'm sure you've noticed the wonderful music being played throughout this video, which is all from Ender Lily's stunning soundtrack. The OST was composed by the Japanese indie music group Mili, who have produced songs for a variety of game, anime, and commercial projects since their founding in 2012. The music can range from haunting and somber, almost like a lost lullaby, to grand compositions that heighten the sense of urgency and strife, to creepy, macabre melodies. The soundtrack is readily available to purchase digitally, but the physical CD that came with the collector's editions has become a sought-after collector's item itself. The Ender Lilies OST complements the atmosphere of the game perfectly, and the game's combination of visuals and audio will surely burn lasting memories into those who experience it. The PlayStation 4 version of Ender Lilies looks great and runs at a smooth 60 frames per second, and while there are some instances of frame drops in certain areas, I honestly didn't notice them until reviewing captured footage. Apparently, this is the case with the Xbox versions as well, with the Steam release obviously capable of providing the smoothest experience, depending on the PC. The Switch version runs mostly at 60fps, however it does stutter from time to time, though I think it's insignificant and infrequent enough to not affect the user's enjoyment. I played through Ender Lilies on Switch first, and the small instances of lag didn't bother me at all, but it is there. In the Switch's handheld mode, the game runs about the same as in docked mode, but to me the stuttering was even less noticeable, probably because of the nature of handheld gaming and its smaller screen. One difference I did find between the PS4 and Switch ports is with the graphics. Both look incredible, but for some reason, the PS4 version has a much softer visual style than the Switch, which appeared sharper and a little more jagged. But then again, there's not much of a difference and the game runs fine on whatever platform you choose to play it on. The only big factor that should affect your decision on how to play Ender Lilies is whether you want achievements or trophies, or want to easily play the game on the go. Anyway, take a look at some comparisons between the Switch and PS4 versions, and judge for yourself. Thank <laughs> you. 
I beat Ender Lilies on my first playthrough to 100% in just under 17 hours, though I estimate most people only need 10 to 12 to just beat the game and receive its standard ending. Some people consider this title to be difficult, but I feel the challenge is just right and there's a great balance and fairness to game progression, since it's difficult to get completely lost in the world of Land's End, and I never needed to grind for levels to get through an area or boss. The assortment of relics and equipment slot system is also well thought out and balanced. A patch that came out at the end of 2021 unlocks a few extra modes when players achieve the game's true ending. These include a boss rush mode and new game plus, where enemies are significantly beefed up and more aggressive from the standard game. The player is also able to change certain parameters in the standard game mode, such as increasing or decreasing enemy damage and setting caps on character and spirit levels. Nothing is unlocked for completing the new modes, they are just mainly there for fun and for the challenge, and are nice bonuses to a game with an already decent length. Aside from the aforementioned god tier art direction, the gameplay is tight and polished, and the game is easy to find for a decent price, as Japanese standard physical editions are very affordable and readily available new or used and the digital versions go on sale often. And no matter which version you purchase, all the various language options are included, so Ender Lilies is also a very accessible game. I think Ender Lilies is an amazing game with so much going for it, but of course it's not without its flaws and isn't a game everybody will enjoy. Again, going back to difficulty, depending on the skill of the player, the game might be considered too hard, especially for a couple of boss fights in particular, and succeeding in combat in certain scenarios requires fast reflexes, careful loadout planning, pattern memorization, and maybe even a little bit of luck. You know, video game stuff. On the other hand, the lack of penalties for death can also be a turnoff for those with a more old school gaming mindset. Aside from that, some enemies can be quote unquote cheesed quite easily, attacked from lower levels or beyond walls and floors with no way to defend themselves. Speaking of enemies, there are some really unique or memorable designs here, and a lot of the bad guys have cool attack patterns and animations, but there could have been more variety to the standard opponents. There are a lot of main skills and sub-skills to acquire that all have their uses, but a small handful easily stand out as the best, and I imagine most players will end up using similar skill setups. It's a small nitpick, but the way areas are mapped don't often give a good sense of how large or small an area really is most of the time. And finally, while the main character Lily is quite cute, nothing else in the game is. Its tone, story, and environments are completely devoid of humor or lighthearted moments, and everyone in Land's End has either been turned into a monster or murdered by those turned into monsters. So perhaps Ender Lilies is a bit too serious, dark, and depressing. I mean, even Dark Souls had its moments of comic relief, few and far between as they were. Also, I'm sorry about lying earlier about not bringing up Dark Souls again. I just can't help it. But overall, I think most people who play this game knowing what it is will have a great time with it, especially if they're fans of action RPGs, metroidvanias, indie titles, or dark fantasy. A majority of the 1 million units sold likely came from the times Ender Lilies went on sale. Whatever the case though, I'm happy for its success and hope more and more people give it a chance. After Ender Lilies, Binary Haze and Atglow produced their second game in 2023, Redemption Reapers, another dark fantasy title, this time a strategy RPG. I picked it up at launch, but haven't yet given it a try. I will have to rectify that soon. I hope it does as well as Ender Lilies so the studio continues to put out more original Japanese games with unique aesthetics and deep lore for audiences around the world. And I do hope for a follow-up to Ender Lilies, one of my favorite games of the last five years, and one of the best blind video game purchases I've ever made. Anyway, that's my review of Ender Lilies Quietest of the Nights. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you haven't played the game yet, I hope you consider adding it to your gaming library. This is Jimmy Hoppa. Take care.